Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Now this time last year we did poppies because I'm a big kind of believer in supporting the poppy appeal in England and that was one of kind of our first signature um, products we did. And so for this year I decided to kind of take it on a bit and, and so available um, as of the beginning of October will be not only your standard kind of four to six millimeter poppies but we're also doing a larger size which is about eight millimeters and an XL size. And then we'll be selling the minis, which are the kind of tiny ones as an individual product as well. So you can buy poppies in all different sizes. Plus you'll be able to buy a mixed pack of kind of um, all the different sizes together. Um, and that's hopefully to help you make some great poppy products. I'm going to give 10% of everything I make on any poppy products and any poppy um, things I sell in my shop or online in October. 10% of my sales to the um, Poppy Appeal in England to help those guys out because I think they do an amazing job and they're a brilliant charity. Um, so I've got various different pro um, projects I've come up with for this. Um, we've got uh, this fantastic tea light, which is not only using the poppies, but also using some of our landscape lines kind of cut and making these really cute, pretty flowers. We've got here, I made some amazing poppy landscape marini, which I'm really proud of. It's hard to see them, but they are so cute. And making them into kind of little jewelry sets and there's a ring here too. And then we've got these tiny little wave poppy landscapes. This, which is a sort of kind of poppy, um, I'm not really sure, it's just a, it just gives a 3D effect. It's got these three A's, it could be a letter holder or just something to sort of, you know, as a remembrance of kind of poppy day, the poppy appeal and what, you know, what our soldiers did for us. And then here we have the another poppy tea light. And last but not least, we have the kind of poppy landscape with the sea in the background, kind of using kind of bigger poppies at the front and smaller poppies at the back to give that feeling of perspective. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this. There's quite a lot in. If I think of any other projects as I'm going along, I'm probably gonna throw those in too. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. So for the tea lights, we're gonna do a small and small and a large one. Um, I tend to start off with just a bit of powder in the middle. I'm not gonna put any blue in the sky with these um because i actually kind of want the clear of the the kind of the clear of the glass and just the colors i'm putting my mask on so i hope you can still stay, hear me i'm starting off with a bit of pea pod green um that's 312 for those who like your codes this is all bullseye glass i'm just sort of laying some down in the middle i'm going to do the same over here And then I'm going to add my old favourite Light Aventurine 1412. Um, so after that, I'm just going to start putting on some stringers. And I want to make sure they're going kind of fairly all the way out to the edge, at least some of them. And then some will be shorter and kind of coming fully into the ring. So now I've just sort of messed that up a bit with this. I must mess it up a bit more. Because that's quite a mess and I've only just started, I am going to just put a little bit more aventurine and slightly cover it up. But if I couldn't, I wouldn't worry. I'd just sort of pat it down my finger a little bit and move it around. It all I feel comes out in the wash in the end. So I'm just going to carry on putting stringers on both these and get you to come back to me in a minute. So we put the strings on. I've added a few red ones as well, just to kind of add a bit of differentiate um, in there. Um, the next thing I want to add on is, is, is not the poppies, is these. So these are our landscape lines. And one of our customers did a really great thing, which was showing that if you cut just strips off like you would Marini, and we sell them either in strips like this or for an extra 50 cents, you can have them and we'll cut them. Um, they come in 25 gram lots. Um, you get little bits like this and actually put a bit of glue down. And 
you can either put them on their side or on their end, depending on what sort of um, effect you want. I'm going to go with them upright on this bit. You can fan them out like the petals of a flower. Like that. So I'm going to put a few of those on both of them. And after that, we'll put on the poppies. So we've done the little flowers, some I've done five and some I've done three. It's quite nice to vary it a bit because, you know, you look at a flower from different sizes, you, the size you see different amounts. I'm now going to put some kind of green frit in the middle. I'm going to use a mixture. This is the Mint Adventuring Green. It's code 2112. Um, just putting a sprinkling of that on. It's quite opal. So it's good for the middle. If you think with these, we're going to drape them over. So this is going to be the outside. You will see, you sort of see the outside when you do a kind of bowl or something. You put the kind of drape on the inside. But um, when, honey, sorry, when you do see a bowl like this, you've got the texture on the inside. But when you're doing a drape, the texture's going on the outside. These will go on attack fuse. Um, Put a bit of this on, and then I'm just going to build it up with a bit more colours, a bit more texture. This is a some form of green. I'm afraid it's been mislabeled in our studio. Um, a bit of light adventuring green, um, medium frit. Because this is tack fusing, I don't want it to be too, too thick, otherwise, it might make the bottom a bit won wonky. I'll just sort of flatten it out with my finger a little bit. And then last but not least, um, a little bit of the medium, so that was the medium adventuring, and then this medium mint and adventuring 2112 again. And with this sort of coming out a little bit. So it's sort of adding some texture out here, and I'm actually gonna come back over and do the same with a light adventuring. That's coming out. So now that's done, we're gonna add the poppies. Now, guys, if you don't wanna, if you wanna keep the costs down or you don't wanna add poppies um, or you don't wanna get them, you could just use red frit here. You could just use different bits of red frit. You could cut up a bit of red scrap into different shapes and just put that, um, that on. But I'm lucky I have the um, poppies. Now we've got the different sizes, as we said earlier, uh, from the kind of big excels. I'm not going to use the excels in this project. I'm going to use the kind of bigger ones, the medium and the small. Again, I'm not going to just make sure they're all sticking to the end of a stringer. I like to kind of, it to be a bit more kind of random than that. Now I'm going to decorate these two with, with various amounts of poppies, different sizes, and then you'll come back to me to see the final bit. So I put the poppies on now, and as you'll see, I've also put these butterflies on. Um, these are made with our butterfly marini, and we get we've, uh, done with four slices and a bit of a black stringer. We can sell them either chopped up or in cane. The good thing about getting them in cane, if you can get your own mosaic nippers like these ones, is that you can make sure that you're getting, you know, there's two slices to be identical bits for a butterfly wing and two slices to be identical to bits for a butterfly wing. When we cut them, we're always cutting it off one cane, so you will have identical bits in there, but then you have to match them up. So, you know, if you've got these and you want to buy it in cane, it's cheaper, and then you can cut your wings and make them sure. I basically cut two different types of, uh, two different pieces of cane, and we made sure the bottoms were one lot and the tops were another, sort of give it that real butterfly feeling. Um, now I'm just gonna put my final touch. I always like putting on a little bit of extra frit. I talk about dimension, which I like. Um, the three frits I'm using, deep red, 224, um, red, 24, and um, tomato red, 24, and red, 124. So I just sort of take a pinch and sprinkling it over. I'm not really being kind of very precise. I make sure I'm putting some red in the green and also right to the edge. And I'm going to go through and do the same with all the different frits now. The different colours mean that you're getting kind of different shades, which sort of, again, I've used the word dimension, I don't want to kind of over labour it, but that will, it will kind of, like, it gives you sort of highlights and lowlights, which is really nice in a piece. 
So here they are, ready to go in the kiln. It's quite hard to see against the green background, but you've got kind of the nice different reds. I really like the pop and the, these flowers, um, and it'd be great to see when they come out after they've been tack fused. So these are now out of the um, kiln. Oh, I love the texture you get on this, and I think these flowers have come out really nicely. So um, I've cut a piece of one millimetre fibre paper. Um, so it's quite rigid when it's like this, but when it burns off, it goes soft. This can then go underneath the piece and it will rest on top. Again, I use my fingers to kind of centralise it, centralise it in on the um, uh, whatever I'm draping it over. I've got various options. For the smaller one, I might use um, this little, these, you know, buy these from a you know, hardware store, whatever, just, you know, pent, they're so cheap and you can slump over them for ages and they're fine. Um, so that can just go on that like that. Perhaps I'll do this one on this one like that. And they're quite low. I'll use a much lower post. I just grabbed the newest post I had and they'll just go in the kiln like that. Again, I'll probably, um, get a, a spirit level on it to make sure it's sort of level before I put it in and if it's not you can just put a bit of fibre paper sort of underneath to level it out if you need to and you can do that when you're slumping anything. So those are ready to go in the kiln. So this is the little kind of um, tea light with kind of poppies coming up and so make it you need to first make a full fuse base. I did this one. I'm not thrilled how it came out. I think it's sort of less elegant. It's a bit too blobby. So I'm going to try for a second attempt and making it slightly more elegant this time. Um, you need to start with kind of either a square or a round to work out from. Um, and then I'm just literally adding glass like the spokes of the wheel, making sure I'm not too close to the edge of the paper. Okay, that will do. Um, I haven't got all long ones, I've got sort of a mix of long and short ones. Um, and it's sort of mixing it up. I, I don't want, you know, two bits of venturine together. Per se, I'll just sort of put another bit of venturine out this way. Over. I'm not thinking too much about it, I just don't want the same sort of colours next to each other. Now if you get a piece like this which is a bit chunky at the bottom you can just cut it off. Maybe cut a point, a, a point on it. various different coloured greens all coming out like the spokes of a bicycle. Um, now I'm also going to add a few of these which are our kind of floral stringers. Um, they're just very variegated so they add a nice texture. You can see it here when they melt down. I really love this sort of texture. And they'll ball up at the ends a bit. They're not an enormous amount, but I'm just grabbing one or two of the thicker ones, cutting them up, and putting those on too. And that's it, pretty much. Job done. And this is going to go in on a full fuse. And then when we come out, we'll put the poppies on and put it, I'll get back in and offer a tack fuse. Um, so this one, we've now got this out of the kiln. Little bit of an issue. I put this on thin fire. Guys, it's much better when doing this kind of project to use a kiln washed kiln shelf, not thin fire, because we've got this, which is basically where the, uh, the powdered paper has stuck to the glass as it's sort of rolled up to become six mil. Um, and it's around here too. Um, I can sandblast this off, which I will do. 
I'm going to show you how to sort of do the project, but then I will sandblast it off and it will go back in the kiln on the tack fuse. So just literally with this, I've got some of the XLs and some of the large um, poppy marini, and I'm just sort of putting some blobs on the ends. It's sort of, I've cut this by hand, not on the saw, which is why they're a bit of a, um, um, less good than our normal ones are. They'll be much prettier, the ones that come out to you. Um, I'll put a few of these excels on just like here and there um, and then I'll just put the large ones on and um, build this on a kiln shelf I'm only doing it here because our kiln shelf is rather full of other stuff um, and as you can see just literally putting them around on the ends of the poppies as few or as many as you want um, I think I'm pretty much done here. I might even just add a couple of the smaller ones. And the smaller bits. Um, you can see some of mine are sort of falling off, but you basically just need to get them balanced properly and then they're fine. Um, and once it's in the kiln, that's much easier. So basically that's how it will be done. Um, and then this will go in on a tack fuse. So this has now come out with the poppies attached. Um, got a weird one slide from there to here. It's kind of, this one's a bit sideways. It doesn't matter. It will all look fine when it's um, draped. So there's a, again, a piece of one millimeter fiber paper. Um, Going to go between that and the mold. And then this will be draped over it. Again, I tend to use my fingertips just to sort of make sure it's in the center. And that will go in the, uh, in the kiln now to be draped. So the next one I want to show you is this little um, wave. So we've got this project we did that didn't really work very well for um, a client and then we had to redo it. And um, we've now cut slices of this, but basically you could use three mil or four mil or six mil um, sheet glass, whatever you want to do this. Um, I'm just using a hot scrap. Put your masks on. And then I'm just going to put some green powder down. Now again, put your paper underneath, reclaim your powder. I'm not doing it because I'm just doing this really quickly. And I'm pretty much covering the whole thing in quite a thick layer of powder for me because I want to kind of cover up that bit of yellow in the background. And then I'm going to just add a sprinkling of the inventory. This was the uh, Peapod 13312 even, and this is the event light inventory in 1412. Pretty much standardly what I use. So those are those done. And then I'm just going to literally, you know, I've got sort of ends of stringers here. It's quite good if you've got, you know, use your stringers and you've got little short bits at the end. You can just use these and I'm going to put these down in a kind of um in quite a lot so here the stringers are on now just going to add the poppies um I'm not going to add many these are our standard size poppies probably add like four or five of them and then some of the mini poppies now if you want mini poppies um we are going to do this as a pro uh, um a product for this uh, from now on. So there will be mini poppies available on their own um, rather than just in the mini mix. And if you're ever really interested in something in mini um, that we do in our standard range, just let us know. And if we're pulling it, we can pull some mini for you. Just let us know. So that's all the poppies I'm gonna put on. I'm just gonna add a couple of ladybirds because I've got them and they're so cute. Um, put them on like that. Um, and then finally, I'm, as I always do, I'm just going to add a bit of frit. Um, I'm going to start with the red frit. So as always, someone's testing our kiln in the background, so sorry about the noise. But um, just the deep red, we've got the medium, we're going to do the deep, um, deep red fine, and then the tomato red and the normal red, the fine and medium. And lastly, a little bit of the green. This is the Minton Adventuring Green 2112. Just 
putting a bit of that at the bottom. Not too much, just like a couple of pinches. And then this is the Light Adventuring Green um, Medium again. Like that. And that is job done. And that has literally taken me less than five minutes to create. So I love how this little one came out. I think it's really cute. So it will now go on this um, mould in the kiln to be slumped into a kind of wave shape. Now it's sort of hard with these to sort of try and choose which part of the wave because it's not the whole length. But I think I'll go something like that so it will curve in and have a little bit of curve here. I might take it a little bit this way. Um, and I hope that will look really nice that it comes out. In a way, I should have done enough to fill up the whole slumping mo um, mode, mould to make it um, more cost effective. I didn't think of that yesterday when I did this. So while we were trying out the red poppies, we also did this one in pink poppies. Um, so we did it green stringers and some um, purple stringers and then did pink poppies. And then with, this is the gold purple and the neo lavender. Uh, XL frit and a couple of butterflies. I think this has come out beautifully. I'm actually going to um, slump this one into a square plate dish. And so you can always think if you don't really like the red colours, you can think about doing this in a, in a different colour. Um, colours like kind of poppies and, and pinks, and we've got beautiful yellow colours. We've pretty much got any colour you love. And if we don't have it, call us up and we might make it for you. So first of all, to make this project, you need to make the um, pre-fused base plate, which is done um, using powders. Uh, I've got a piece of glass here, depending on what size you want to make it. Um, you need a horizon line. So I'm using just a piece of paper to do my horizon line um, and masking it off. Uh, kind of, you know, think of thirds is always good. Um, so I'm sort of... Okay, and also because I want the kind of poppies m more than sky. Um, so for the sky, I'm using a bit of light cyan 216. Um, just want to put my mask on. And again, we should have paper underneath and reclaim. So a good dusting to get the saturation otherwise we won't particularly in the sky we're not putting anything on afterwards so the sky we want a really good thick layer the other thing to make sure is that when you put your paper on that it's horizontal to the vertical of the page you don't want your horizon on a pisser for those who are not english and don't understand what pisser means it means a ski whiff um, then I'm taking a little bit of Aventurine Blue, 1140 um, powder, just to sort of, kind of, you know, like clouds. But they're quite dark and sparkly clouds. So that's that. And then I literally take the paper and I put it, so now I'm masking off the sky. Now between... I would be taking a paper mask off the sky if I wasn't quite so clumsy. Um, now between, if you look over here, the this, this, this sea and the grass, I'm not so worried about having a clear line. So I'm going to put the kind of grass in first. A sort of general area. this green and then I'm going to use I'm using Egyptian that was Peapod 312 and I'm just going to use Egyptian 164 for the C and again these areas are going to be you know slightly covered up afterwards so I'm not worried about a thick covering I just want to get a kind of a little bit of colour underneath Particularly the sea is quite heavily covered afterwards. And then and finally I'm using my old faithful 1412 light adventure and just adding texture. So that's this finished now and ready to go in the kiln. It will go in on, in on attack fuse. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's 
that and here's one I made earlier. Um, so to decorate it, I'm first going to put in the C. Um, so we have these, which are, these are kind of, we do landscape lines, but these are kind of our newer landscape lines. Um, they're just, sort of, um, we're calling them skinny blues landscape lines and they will be sold in 25 grams and you'll get them in as many 20 pieces as you can get in 25 grams plus a smaller bit um, to make up the weight and then you can cut them to whatever size you need um, so for this I'm going to put some this is the um, Glastec gel from Bullseye um, really I use it on all projects I love it um, put some of this down now I'm going to put my glasses on and with this I need to kind of cut a mitered corner um, so uh, an angle to sort of fit with the sort of angle of the, the, the ground um, so I might put that one like that and then I'm going to choose a bit of darker one like that it doesn't need to be exactly following the line of the green we're going to soften that edge in a minute anyway and then that one so we'll make that a bit longer so you can just see i've used the mosaic nippers to kind of nipper shape along the edge measuring it out clipping it off and i'm going to sort of leave a little bit of a gap for the blue underneath um one to not use so much material and two you know, there's a bit of gap which shows might show a bit of light coming through as you sort of have a bit of light in the you know shining on the sea push these at this end right up to the edge um and that's that i'm you know thinking whether i want to Put a bit more there and I am actually going to do that. Just add another little bit at the end there. Okay, so that's that done. And now stringers at this bottom bit. So I'm just going to put a liberal squirt of blue gel and use the nozzle to sort of splurge it all over. My daughter's favourite thing to do, splurge blue glass tech gel. Literally the child to go through tons of the stuff. And then I'm going to put stringers down, um, maybe thicker ones at the front and some thinner ones at the back. And so I'm going to cover this whole, um, whole green bit in kind of stringers. So here it is, um, and we've just added kind of a, uh, a layer of stringers, as Miller said it looks like her hairy legs. Um, and now just thinking about kind of blending the horizon. Now I sort of think of this as this is a field and this is going to the distance. And in the distance, there's maybe some trees and a hedge and you can kind of see the sea over the top of the hedge. So I'm just using little Marini. Um, as you know, I have them and I'm lucky, um, but you could just use some bigger frit or some cut up pieces of glass. So I'm putting them down, kind of overlapping with the sea, just to sort of soften the edge of the, the hard line of the Marini versus the sea. Um, this I feel is sort of a tree going maybe up into the sky. And I'm just going to carry on adding these until there's a kind of nice layer. So as you see, we've sort of built up the layer and it's going into the sea a bit. So it just um, softens the edge. Now I'm going to start putting on the marini. So I start and put on some, just a few little excels at the front. Um, we'll sell these in mixed bags as well. So you'll get a couple of excels, like three excels. And then um, how many have ordered? mixed up of the different sizes um, and then some of the kind of large and then going down to the smaller ones
and then at the sort of back I'll put the minis on oh, at the top and I'm going to carry on adding these in now. I'm thinking it's looking really great but I'm just going to add a bit of finishing touch I'm just going to put some sort of um uh, green um, this is the course mint and adventure in two one one two um, pulling faces Sandra's making noise in the background stop cutting cane Sandra um, and then no that was a, sort of just um, transparent light green and then this is again the mint and venturine but as sort of um medium and then we've got the light adventure in medium so that's going on and then my old faithfuls again deep red tomato red and red opal Now, just to see the kind of some of the spots have gone in the sky this time, you are going to want to clean those off and get rid of them. They're not going to look so good in this piece. And also off the sea, which I'll do with a paintbrush in a minute once I'm finished. So lastly, having cleaned the little bits off, I'm going to put some little um, seagulls on. I've got these on a tourist shore. You could cut to make them kind of out of stringers, just sort of a little approximation of a bird, just to give the kind of feeling of a bird in the sky. So those are those on, and now this will go on the kiln on attack fuse. So these are now out of the kiln. Um, I really love how they've come out. I think they look great. Uh, I'm going to mount them in these frames. These are just two standard IKEA frames. Um, and I, with the IKEA frames, I've had mount boards made. I've got just local supplier who cuts mount boards. Um, just because they're something slightly thicker for the uh, glass to stick to. I actually don't have them for this one, so I'm just going to try on a bit of card, but I'm probably going to have to take it off afterwards and um, uh, get it stuck to a thicker board. So when you're mounting things, you need to think about using a ruler to make sure that they are in the middle. So kind of measuring up um, and kind of getting it pretty much there, tipping it up, putting the glue on and then sticking it back down. And then before it dries, just measuring it again and also making sure you're on a flat surface. Otherwise, it slowly does this, which is annoying. Um, so, yeah, those are the kind of two things to think. We're going to glue these and then we will put them in the frames. So for this project, I'm using six millimetre glass. Now I've decided on the width of my project, which is going to be this wide. And then I'm cutting three pieces that are sort of staggered. So this is one smaller, one slightly bigger, and then one's the biggest. And if you can imagine, they'll go on the stand, um, kind of separately glued like that. Um, I've literally then just put pea pod and adventure powder on, put them in the kiln and given them a, um, a tack fuse and that's exactly like it is in the uh, video we just did for um, the, uh, the landscape. Um, now I'm putting them on the kiln shelf um, and I've cut some, this is um, three mil fibre paper, two pieces. If you've got six mil you could just use that but I had an off cut of three mil so I'm just using that. Um, and. Uh, making sure that this is kind of pushed up against it and in fact to stop it moving I'm just going to put a bit of gel glue on the back put a bit of gel glue there put a bit of gel glue there and that will help just hold it all in place so that one kind of won't move around now then um, the idea of this is sort of a poppy field getting kind of um, bigger as it goes further away um, probably use that one on this this so I'm using some of the floral stringers we've got. I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm going to cut these. Um, and it's sort of going on the green, but also going up and above the green a little bit. So I'm going to cover these in stringers and then come back to me when it's done. 
So as you can see, I put the stringers on now, and I'm now going to put on a bit of the um, Mint and Adventuring 2112, just at the bottom. I don't need to worry about it so much in the back layers, but in the kind of front layer, it's going to show up more. Let's get my tweezers in there to get that bit out. So that's that done. Um, also on the base pad, I'm also going to put just a little bit at the front. Um, just so there's a little bit of texture at the front before the first. Upright. Um, her next I'm just going to start on the poppies um, again thinking kind of bigger ones at the front so these you need to make sure they're attached to a good um, a good kind of stringer and maybe kind of coming onto the um, base plate as well um, even sort of pushing a couple of stringers together And if you've sort of realised you need an extra string of stringer, then you can kind of pull, you know, put an extra one on. So I'm just going to put those and then and then going further back, I'm going to use the next size down. and then so on and so forth. So here you can see we've kind of put poppies on them. I'm going to put a little bit more of the um, light green adventure in just um, scattered. Again, I just feel it gives texture and then I will add my normal um, three reds. Not very much, just a little bit here and there, just, to, um, just some also some on the bottom. Um, so be careful about the bottom because it will make it harder to glue the the um the tops down if this isn't flat um but yeah i'll put this on and then these will go in the kiln on a tack fuse and we'll see how they come out and get them stuck down so these are out now i love the way they've come out um really good lesson learned do not put frit on this bit because unless you're going to really kind of work out i'm going to put one here one here one here and only put the frit in between. I've had to dremel here just to get it a bit flatter so that when I put this on, I've got a flat surface to glue it to. So I'm gonna mix up some glue now and get an extra pair of hands to help me glue these because I'm gonna to need to get all three lined up and then get sellotape over to hold it. And as you can see, even with, you know, we'll, we'll give it a go filming it and to two pairs of hands but we may have to stop filming and get three pairs of hands to do this. We'll see. Okay, let's get some glue made. So this is ready to glue now. I'm just going to put the glue along. I've dremeled the edge a bit to give it a good surface to stick to. It's going to be quite hard for me to hold this and get the next one ready to be glued. Um, so we're going to kind of try and video and at the same time but we may have to stop video but you get the idea we're just going to space them apart i've already got a pretty good idea of where i'm putting them on the base plate i've dremeled that area this is definitely a two-man job you cannot glue this without a second pair of hands i'm afraid more unless you're very acrobatic or something. I don't know how you do it. I'm 
Now I'm going to take hold of this and now Miller's going to get some sellotape but we're going to turn off the video now while we try we get this sellotape together. So I held it while Miller put sellotape over forwards and back. It's hard, it's a tricky one guys. Um, it's not an easy thing to glue but um, I think it's worth it so give it a go. So these are our limited edition um, poppy field marini. As you can see, the kind of size, the biggest one is to my finger. Um, and then this is kind of, they get down to quite small, um, which are about kind of uh, eight, nine um, millimetres across. Um, so what would you do with this? Well, we're selling this, anything in our poppy range, as I've said, we're selling at, um, we're giving 10% of the sales to uh the poppy appeal in the uk it's a charity that i try and support every year um so i wanted to kind of come up with an idea of maybe turning these into bits of jewelry so we'll put these in the kiln on a tack fuse just to fire polish them off and then we're going to make this one into a pendant um and this one into uh, a ring and then a couple of pairs of earrings um or a pair of earrings and then i might actually also do one which would be like a pin that you could wear um, if I've got the findings for it so that you just sort of put it through and it's a, it's a pin so that those are um, those are your kind of uh, little things that you could make it is an expensive marini it's it took a lot of work and um, a lot of my inspiration I'm really pleased with how it came out but I wanted to kind of create it as a sort of special thing to commemorate our soldiers who fought and died for us so you know as we said we're going to put a um, percent of our sales um, towards to charity that we sell and I'll just put those in and see how they come out and then we can show you how to make the jewellery after. So with this jewellery put in we've also glued bells on the back. You need to dremel guys, just put a dremel across or some kind of to rough up the glass. You'll get a better um, better contact to the, the glass, to the metal and also if the metal doesn't have any kind of um, texture on it or something for the glue to stick in. So like a bell like this is totally... Uh, shiny on both sides it's good to run the, the dremel across that too um so this is a little necklace with a bale and then these and then we've also just um tack fused a few fire polished a few poppies and making those into little kind of trinket things and a couple the one pair of earrings as well and they're literally just sort of dip those into the glue and stick them on the back after you've just given it a bit of a dremel So here are all our poppy products we've made I wanted to show you. Um, we have this one, which is the kind of three little bit different bits. It's almost that like you could use this, you know, like one of those letter holders where you put sort of different things in between. I quite like it as that, but I also think it's such a pretty little kind of 3D sculpture. It's so cute. And then we've got the, um, the frames. It's hard to see them in the frame, but I absolutely love these. I just think they've come out so well and just look really beautiful. Um, uh, then we've just to show you the kind of pale of poppy idea. Um, so this is just kind of a platter using the pink poppies. And I, I haven't shown you how to make these, but it's pretty much the same principle as all of this, but two layers, three mil on top, and then you decorate on top, and then you do it on a full fuse. Um, but if you need more information on that, let me know. Um, then we've got the little slumped landscape which is just so cute. Uh, over here we've got the um, Landscape Poppy Marini jewellery set, which I'm so pleased how it's come out. Here, we just thought we'd also show you um, about the idea of the just simply tack fusing a, a poppy and turning it into jewellery. So this is a little jewellery set, and this I'm gonna put on my little dog, so he's gonna have a little poppy. Um, and then we have the kind of poppy, Drake tea light, which is cute. And then leaving kind of also awesome till last. Uh, these are the two um, tea lights, which I just think look spectacular. I'm like so pleased how they've come out. And I think they're really pretty. The lovely thing about them is because we didn't put any blue in the sky effectively, you've got this sort of 3D effect where you can kind of see the flowers through so from both sides you get it all and it just sort of makes it really lovely and kind of yummy. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. As I said, 
10% of any sales of the Poppy products in October will go to the British Poppy um, charity, which is a great charity. And um, if you've liked this video, please subscribe. And also if you want to get alerts and know when videos are coming out, there's an alert button. You need a little bell and you need to press that too. And then you'll hear as soon as a video comes out.